when we designed our games, we focused on that. Because, we focused on self-efficacy because that's uh, that's everybody's favorite variable for trying to change. But if it's not causally related to behavior, um, you know, we're, uh, we may be blowing in the wind here. Finally, uh, behavior change procedures. Uh, there is almost no literature on individual behavior changes and changing mediating variables. In fact, we've reviewed that literature as well, and that <coughs> literature shows that uh, even though investigators pick, they target the mediating variables, they select the variables that they want to change, that half of the mediating variables that have been selected for change don't change as a result of, uh, of intervention. And when they get changes in the mediating variables that they did get change in, the results tend to be very, very weak. So to make more effective interventions, we need better research in all these different areas to find strongly and causally related uh, behaviors, to find strongly and caus causally related mediating variables, blah, blah, blah. But this is an aside. Let's go on to the video game. So this is our, our model of how we think <coughs> video games influence behavior. Is that uh, somebody's got to have a motivation to play the video game. Clearly demographics is a factor in that. Demographics would include age. Children tend to be motivated to play video games. If they play a video game, uh, they get ex they're exposed to the video game. Exposure to the video game leads to immersion. I'll talk about immersion in a little while. But immersion deals with the story. And are you, do you feel immersed in the story? The more immersed you feel, the, uh, the more likely you're going to enjoy it and go on. Um, if you're immersed, you then get uh, uh, exposed. You, you pay attention to the video game activities. Another theory talks about central processing. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, if you centrally process the measures, you increase your practical knowledge. Practical knowledge leads to behavior change skills, which leads to self-control skills, goal setting, problem solving, which leads to attempts at behavior change. Attempts at behavior change are in fact influenced by barriers to change and the environment. We're particularly interested in what's going on, because we're interested in kids, we're interested in what's going on in the home. We've shown in a series of studies that home availability and accessibility of fruits, vegetables, other food items, physical activity materials, uh, increases the likelihood that behavior change occurs. If you, get a, if you get initial behavior change attempts, hopefully you get continued behavior change attempts. And then over time, one only knows how long that is, you get uh, the new behaviors become habits. Anyway, that's the conceptual model that, uh, that underlies the work that, uh, that we do. It's based on four different theories, self-determination theory, elaboration likelihood model, social cognitive theory, Transportation theory, which is where the immersion idea comes from. Self-determination theory says that there are two types of motivation. If there's anybody really informed about self-determination theory in the audience, my apologies. I'm giving a very, very uh, surface presentation of uh, self-determination theory. But self-determination theory has two types of motivation, intrinsic motivation, extrinsic motivation. Intrinsic motivation is where you do the behavior because of the intrinsic joy of doing it, uh, or the intrinsic value of doing it. You're not doing it because somebody else is telling you to do it. You're doing it because you want to do it. Uh, what self-determination theory proposes is that if you can get intrinsic motivation, you're going to get more sustained behavior because you're going to go back and keep doing it because you like doing it, because you want to do it. So you hopefully can see where video games might fit in here, that playing video games is kind of is kind of fun, and so that would be the fun of video games would be an intrinsic motivation factor. Extrinsic motivation would be you're doing it to please somebody else. The literature on non uh, on behavior change and extrinsic motivation or <coughs> self-determination theory suggests that you will do a behavior for extrinsic motivations, rewards for pressure from parents or friends. But once that pressure is removed, that behavior is history. You're not going to do that, uh, that behavior again. So self-determination theory would say intrinsic motivation is what we're uh, we're trying to do. The, how do we promote intrinsic motivation? Well, we, intr we promote intrinsic motivation by promoting competence, which is the self-efficacy kind of idea. The more we can enhance your confidence in doing the behavior, the more likely you are to do that behavior. Uh, autonomy, choice. You've got to be given choices. If you're forced to do it, you're going to like it less. You're going to be less intrinsically motivated. If you if you choose to do it, you're going to do it more because you want to do it. And then relatedness. 
ties to other or values, and we'll talk in a minute about how we've incorporated values into the games. The next theory is the elaboration likelihood model. Uh, elaborate, the key concept in elaboration likelihood model, and again, if somebody's a real devotee of elaboration likelihood, I apologize. There are books on the elaboration likelihood model I'm giving you the surface. But it says that the central processing of messages is key to changing beliefs and, and, and attitudes and behaviors. Central processing means that there's conscious attention to messages, so that when you get a message, you're, you're playing with the ideas, you're thinking about the ideas. Peripheral processing would mean that you're ignoring the central message and you're paying attention to just the fun activities. So if you play our video game and you ignore the messages, if you simply are doing it to maximize points, then that would be peripheral processing and the benefit of our video game is being lost on you. So somehow we've got to get you to focus on the message that's coming along with having the, uh, having the fun. Uh, the, uh, the, 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 the personal relevance. So, so the more the activities in the game are personally relevant, the more likely you are to pay attention and essentially process. And we do this by tailoring value statements to participants. Social cognitive theory, uh, most of the behavioral interventions that have been done have used social cognitive theory in one way or another. A key construct in social cognitive theory is self-regulatory skills, that somehow you learn how to control your own behavior. The key components uh, of that are goal setting and goal review. You set goals, you uh, monitor your behavior, you uh, periodically evaluate whether you're achieving your goals. If you do achieve your goals, you tend to pat yourself on the back, and that becomes a self-rewarding kind of uh, loop. Problem-solving skills, if you encounter problems in, uh, in changing your behavior, the more problem-solving skills are, uh, you have, the more likely you are to attain your goals. And then self-monitoring with feedback, that, uh, that you monitor your behavior uh, and, uh, and get feedback on uh, whether you achieved your goals or not. Uh, <clears throat> there's there's a, a relatively new component of this research called implementation intentions. And implementation intentions it deals with the specificity of the goals that you set. So if you simply say, I'm going to eat more fruits and vegetables, that's not enough. You're probably never going to do it because you, you don't have anything specific to hang your hat on. Alternatively, if you say you're going to increase your consumption of vegetables at lunch, for the next three days, and you're going to do that by eating carrots uh, uh, for uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, uh, that comes close to the implementation intentions kinds of idea. Uh, if you identify what problems you're likely to have, so if you're at school uh, and school <coughs> isn't serving carrots tomorrow, assuming tomorrow is a school day, uh, and then figuring out what you would do to, if carrots weren't available on the school line, uh, would be an indication of anticipatory problem solving, which is a component of implementation intentions. But the whole idea behind thinking through this beforehand is to try to automate the behavior change. So if you've got to think about behavior change while you're doing it, it's probably not going to occur. People don't like to spend a lot of time thinking about their behavior changes, especially in regard to food. Uh, so the more we can automate the process, cognitively automate the process, the more likely we are to be successful. Another aspect of social cognitive theory is modeling. Modeling says that there are people in your environment who uh, uh, demonstrate how to do the behavior. The most efficient way to learn a new behavior is to watch somebody else do it. We can stick modeling kinds of activities into video games by having the characters in the video game model the behaviors that they really like. Uh, and then the fact, the last issue was the self-efficacy. Self-efficacy came out of social cognitive theory. It's very closely related to skills. I think what happened is that skills is really a more important kind of idea, but you can't measure skills. You can measure self-efficacy. So self-efficacy is kind of taking precedence in, uh, in the research.